Good evening, everyone. Let's give it a moment for all the streaming platforms to be present and on as well. All right, and we are good to go. Welcome, everyone, to another installment of the Orange and Blue View. I am one of your hosts, Ron White. On that side of me, my partner in crime, Mr. Dylan Von Arts. Dylan, how are you doing today on this lovely Saturday, my man? Uh, not too bad. Just took it easy and was uh, really excited to hop on tonight. There's been a lot of news going on even uh, today within the, the last few hours. So yeah. uh, just happy to be here as always. Yeah. Um, you know, we're in March Madness, as you and I were just talking about it in, in the room. And that us, that's not only applicable to to basketball. <laughs> it sounds mm -hmm. like we have some madness when it comes to the NFL as well. Um, so, yeah, some tidbits we'll get into here. Some of the options the Broncos can think about doing at quarterback, you know, through some of the uh, ones that are available and obviously in the draft. Um, and other news when it comes to free agency. But before we get into that, I want to just welcome in a few folks we see in the chat here. We got Kevin Gray coming in. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin, for coming in as always, a man. We appreciate you. He says, good evening, Thomas. Well, me, Dylan, and Scott. <laughs> Big mile high salute to Broncos country. Denver Broncos for life. MHH for life. Again, Kevin, thank you for coming in. We appreciate you as always. And then we got David Yunkin coming in. Coming in as always as well. We appreciate you for coming in, my man. He says, I really don't care what any other team is doing. All I care about is the Broncos. Yes. Yes. That's all we're here for, to give you the latest and greatest Broncos news. Um, but I, I will say now, yeah, obviously we shouldn't care about what other teams are doing. But one move from a team most recently may kind of change some things when it comes to, to the draft. Uh, but point taken, um, Broncos country is all that matters at the end of the day. So, again, thank you, David, for coming in, my man. We appreciate you. All right. Let's see who else we have here coming in to say hey. Um, just give us a minute here, guys. We got Bakes Productions 2008 coming in with the comments. Thank you. Thank you. He says, hello, Broncos Country London calling. Oh, ah, okay. Wow. But again, thank you. Ah, thank you for coming in with that. I appreciate it. All right. Let's see who else we have coming in the chat. Um, got William James Baker coming in. What a day of news. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes, William. So let, let, let's get into, I mean, it's not really Broncos news here, um, but, you know, it, it does impact the Broncos in the sense that, you know, the, the idea was far-fetched from him coming to Denver anyway, um, just because of the fit. Um, but, you know, the, the Justin Fields trade to um, the Steelers. Now that Justin Fields is off the board, Dylan, it, it makes you wonder now, and even before the Justin Fields news, right? It's, you know, there have been so many of these top free agent quarterbacks, you know, that have been available. Um, you know, Kirk Cousins, obviously. Um, and we can, the list goes on. But the Broncos have kind of just been, you know, staying pat, not really, you know, maybe kind of peaking a little bit of interest, but not making any, you know, type of serious moves, um, not doing too much into maybe trying to acquire um, some of those free agents. So it kind of makes you wonder, you know, given that a lot of the top free agent quarterbacks are off the board and the speculation of the likes of Justin Fields and Sam Howell can now be put to bed. Where, where, did, where did the Broncos go? I mean, I know we, I know we have the draft, um, and we we do anticipate that the Broncos will be looking 
at the draft, obviously, to to get that next signal caller. Um, but do, do we think that can happen and maybe looking at some of the remaining uh, quarterbacks on the market? I believe Ryan Tannehill's still out there. Carson Wentz, I believe, is also still out there. Um, I think Josh Dobbs' name has been floated around. And heaven forbid, I, I don't want him here in Denver, but a Zach Wilson. <laughs> Is also there as well. So, I, I guess, I guess, how do how do you see this this playing out? You know, it's, you know, Stidham. I, I think for me, but, but you know, before I let you go, I, I think the Broncos should. I, I think I like the fact that they haven't really rushed to the table to try to get, you know, any of those free agent quarterbacks and kind of staying put as we stand now because, you know, Stidham is. Let Stidham be your starter. I mean, I think a lot of these other, um, these remaining free agent quarterbacks, they don't, they're not much of an upgrade. I mean, you could say maybe Ryan Tannehill might be a little bit of an upgrade over Stidham. But the others, no, not not at all. So I, I would say roll with Stidham, get your rookie in here, draft your quarterback um, to kind of learn with him. And learn under Sean Payton, and 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 go from there. But I, I guess, how do you see this this QB situation playing out for Denver? I mean, I guess what what are the options? What what is the plan? Yeah, there's a couple directions they could go in. Obviously, uh, I think going into the draft, especially now with Minnesota trading up, or well, not trading up, but. Uh, snagging the Texans pick. So then I have two first round picks of that are more than likely going to use to uh, mm -hmm. move up and take one of those top quarterback prospects. Hard to say which one, obviously there's some people saying JJ McCarthy, but uh, I believe Josh McCown is their quarterbacks coach and he coached Drake may high in school. high school. Mm -hmm. So uh, hard to say now, obviously we'll see once draft day comes and, well, not maybe even a little before. Who knows when they'll trade up. But uh, as it pertains to the Broncos, it's hard for me to see them trade. It was already hard before, but uh, to see them try and trade up and be competitive with other teams who have more draft capital. Because uh, if you want to get ahead of the Vikings, you're likely going to have to get to that number four spot. And I, I it, like, unless you're, you're throwing in Sertan, and even then, I don't, I don't know. I think the Vikings just have too much ammo compared to the Broncos. Um, so they could either, at 12, take the fifth available quarterback there if they like them enough, which would probably be a Bo Nix. Uh, but he, that's a guy you could probably get later. That's mm -hmm. all I've been hearing from insiders and all the uh, knowledgeable people. Uh, about the draft on whether it's through uh, you know NFL Network or Twitter or wherever you want to look. The Knicks is more uh, hype from the fans and the media. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe you take a Knicks at 12, maybe you take him a little later. Maybe you take a Spencer Rattler later in the draft. But if they can't snag one of those guys for whatever reason because i i'd be pretty shocked if sean payne doesn't come away with this uh in this draft with a quarterback mm -hmm. at first round to seventh round somewhere in there it's got he's got to take one uh it, like they could sign one of these veterans like if if we absolutely had to in my opinion i think ryan Tannehill would be the guy if you're trying to elevate the room mm -hmm. but uh yeah, I mean, at this point, it's 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 pretty slim pickings, uh, and uh, it's just it's just a really weird situation. We won't really know until late April. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, who what quarterbacks are on the top of the board and how the board falls when it comes to the draft. I mean, that that's 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 the name of the game when it comes to the NFL draft. And 
you know, now with that trade with the Texans for the Vikings, again, that puts them in that prime position to move up within the top five to snag their guy. And I've been hearing rumblings of, you know, so we're, we're thinking that, you know, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, one, two, three. And then from there, there's been some rumors that the New York Giants could also be in play when it comes to J.J. McCarthy. Um, so that, that might be something the Broncos are going to have to consider. And then it's like, well, if those four options are off the board, where do you go? You know, do you do, do you get Knicks at 12? Or do you, do you move back? Um, try to trade down to acquire that second round pick um, to, you know, maybe get a receiver or maybe an edge late round one. Because I'm with you, Dylan. I, I do think Knicks is going to be there in round two. I, I have this, you know, Knicks. Now, I know some people may say, you know, if Knicks is your guy, go get him at 12. And yes normally but i just think you know given the broncos don't have i think the fact that they don't have that day two pick that 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 round two pick is why i'm more of a proponent to to trade back and get that because again this roster has to be rebuilt we, we, we've already seen the makings of it it's being reshaped you know outside of quarterback we've we've mentioned it several times that the defensive line, specifically the interior, they have to get better there. Um, and so, you know, kind of being strategic in that regard helps. But yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking, you know, Knicks. I I do think. I mean, some people may say with Knicks, you you, you may need to sit him a little while. I mean, but I, I, he he might depending on how it all shakes out in camp you know he he may be ready to go day one with Sidham, right so it's it just depends i mean again i've been watching more bo nicks tape because again as as this is kind of taking shape you know i know we have a little over a month before the nfl draft but kind of as this is taking shape i'm i'm thinking that nicks is going to more than likely become the pick at quarterback <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, I, I think that's the plan now, you know, maybe later on, if you want to, you know, make sure that you're good, kind of have that fail safe, maybe you can get, you know, a Ryan Tannehill, maybe on a one year deal or something, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking Stidham, Knicks, those are your two options. But before we move on, guys, we want to get to our sponsor for tonight. So our sponsor is AG1. So, you know, we're all getting older, especially me, kind of nearing my 40s. So the older that I get, <laughs> the more serious I have to become about taking care of my health and my nutrition. It's very imperative of making sure I keep that strict regimen um, of what I eat. So here comes AG1. No matter what you do for a living, um, it can become all too convenient to rely on your Starbucks coffee or your Red Bull. But that's not great for your body, especially things like your blood pressure. Obviously, there's that crash when it comes to caffeine. But with AG1, I get sustained energy throughout the day. So I'm not reaching or going downstairs to my Keurig to make my third or my fourth cup of coffee <laughs> for the day. <laughs> On top of that, I can stand swallowing those hard, those hard pills, um, those big pills. So I've learned recently how it's important that it is to be to take care of your gut. AG1 kills all three of those birds with one stone, and it does so in an impressive manner. Improve gut health, focus energy and nutrition all in one awesome delicious smoothie ag1 is next level ag1 is a supplement that i trust to support my body health and help me feel my best if you want to uh, take ownership of your health it starts with ag1 
Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs when you subscribe. Go to AG1, drinkag1.com slash huddle. That's drinkag1.com slash huddle. Check it out, folks. All righty. And moving back to the chat, let's see who else we have. And again, William, thank you for coming in with, with that uh, Facebook comment. Let's see. We got Chell, 100% Will. Thank you for coming, my man. He says, Sean should build a defense for next year to get Shador. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I will say this, Chell, and, you know, the, the defense does definitely have to be addressed. I, I, as I mentioned, the interior of that defensive line is important. Edge, important. I know with the inside linebacker, they just picked up um, – the, the ex-commander, uh, Cody Barton, um, to pair with Alex and Singleton now with um, Josie Jew moving on to Carolina. But they, 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 it would do them well to, to draft an inside linebacker as well or look into looking in that position since, you know, Drew Sanders now is um, going to be moving to edge. So, yeah, I, I'm with you on making sure that they can surround this defense, surround – their fundamental piece of Patrick Sertan with great players. Now the whole Shador thing, I, you know, we'll see. I, 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 I don't think. Um, again, I, I think this draft, when it comes to quarterback play, again, but Bo Nix is is a round one talent, and I, I think again he will be there, at even in round two, um, for the Broncos to grab. Um, so again. We'll, you know, we'll see what the quarterback situation is. Maybe they don't like Bo Nix. They may go a different direction. You know, the, the record might be bad enough for them to be picking up that high ticket of Shador. You know, we don't know how all this will play out. Um, but I'm with you on the first portion that this defense, specifically the interior of that D-line and the edge, that, that definitely needs to be uh, a focus. Yeah, the, the defense has been – dreadful this this past year especially and i think as we see uh this team rebuilding the broncos are shifting to more of an offensive identity especially with their head coach being sean payton an offensive minded guy so i i think fans should get used to uh the, the focus mainly being on offense and the defense can still be good to great but I, I think there's going to be a lot more emphasis on the offense. But, uh, yeah, I think the Broncos uh, trading up is probably out of the question at this point. But staying at 12, I just can't fathom with the amount of picks we have. It's like, yeah, I think we have around eight picks. We have but, eight now. Mm -hmm. But we only have two in the top 100. That's that's just not going to cut it. And the, the sooner this team can – bring in young uh, top tier talent, the sooner we can get out of this rebuild. So I think a trade down from 12, whether it, even if say there's a Dallas Turner there or mm -hmm. a Terry and Arnold, as, as much as I would love to have those guys, it's going to take more than just one to uh, uh, rebuild this defense. So trading back, now you can say, oh, oh, maybe I'm in the uh, late 20s, maybe, and I can get pick up a Cooper DeGene because mm -hmm. you need secondary help. And then you get that second round pick. Oh, I can pick up a Adisa Isaac at edge or whatever. You can plug multiple spots. So I think that's uh, probably the way it'll go. And as for Shadur, I'm not sure how I feel about him yet. Uh, I want to I wanna see how he does this year. But uh, yeah. especially the rest of that quarterback class, obviously, is, there's no one like a Caleb Williams or a Drake May that you, you've been hearing of besides Shador, especially in this community, you know, Colorado. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what kind of prospects are uh, jumping up the board next year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Shador did have a, a, a good mm, – it was okay to good – um, first in season there at, at CU, but uh, again, next year is definitely going to be the, the deciding factor on 
you know, um, kind of where his position is when it comes to, you know, how scouts view him, where he's on the draft boards, things like that. So, all right. And again, but you will thank you very much uh, for your comment, man. We appreciate it. All righty. Let's see. We got David Yonkin back in. Thank you, sir. So Sean may have to settle for Knicks or Penix. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if I want to view it as settling. You know, again, if if Sean Payton thinks that Knicks is the guy, then go get him. You know, again, Knicks does a lot of things well. Now, again, there, there's some things with Knicks, you know, I, I think that he does throw a solid deep ball. I know sometimes he's a little bit, he's not accurate on some of those at times, and sometimes his throws in the middle of the field can be a bit off. But, yeah, as far as the processing with Knicks, I mean, timing and rhythm, you know, that that's what Sean Payton demands from his quarterback running his offense. So it appears from what we've seen at Oregon, David, that Bo Nix can do that well. And I think, I think he'll be the perfect quarterback or prospect for this system. I think Penix will also be good. You know, I, I don't now, you know, with Penix, I know he the medicals have clear, but it's still a bit concerning, at least for me. Um, but you know, Penix can also run the system. So I, I wouldn't say it'll be settling, David. You know, again, if if Sean Payton has the both of them high on his board and um and if they're available, if one's not available but the other is. You know, take a flyer. And again, Knicks, like we just mentioned, Knicks will be there round two. And I think Penix for sure will be there round two. Penix may even be there round three, <laughs> potentially. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you, you know, let's say a scenario of, you know, Broncos trading back to pick up that second round pick. Well, again, you mentioned right there's a lot of different positions you can target with that later first round pick. Wide receiver. Um, edge, um, but th those those are two for sure. They can then get maybe a Knicks in the second round, picking up that second round pick um, from the trade back, or if they want to look at a defensive lineman, they can maybe do that second round. And again, I think if Penix is high up and high enough, maybe look at Penix in the third round. Take a flyer on Penix and see what happens. So again, David, it's I, I don't want to view it as settling for either of these two. It really just depends on, you know, based on what Sean Payton has seen, are these guys the right guys to run his system in Denver? Uh, yeah, I I don't think a team is ever going to tell you that they uh, settled for a pick, when, especially when it's like in the first round. You always hear, yep, you know what, we got our guy. This is exactly who we wanted and whatnot. Uh, I think the only way you'll know, especially with Knicks, because I don't think there's any way Penix goes in the first round, you'll know that Sean didn't settle if he takes him at 12, because I feel like that's, at least personally, and from what I've seen from others, that, that's a that's a pretty big reach for Knicks at, at mm -hmm. 12. Like, you don't take him at the back end of the first round, no no qualms there no problems there but uh yeah I, I don't think sean payton is gonna settle for a quarterback if he doesn't like him i he's straight up just not gonna take him i don't think he'll he'll roll the dice he'll say okay we got stidham and then maybe we'll bring in a, a Tannehill, a josh dobbs a carson wentz a whomever to uh because you can't just roll out in the season with a uh denucci and um stidham I think you need to add another guy to that room. Right. Um, but I, I could see him liking either of these guys. Like you mentioned, the processing with Knicks is like lightning fast. Uh, yeah, there's some concerns with his arm. And I know he, he can throw a deep ball. He can throw at pretty much anywhere on the field, but it's more about how quick can he get it there. Yeah. The velocity on those balls, yeah. especially like those middle to deep out routes and whatnot. 
Um, and then Penix, he he throws a beautiful ball. That, mm-hmm. Especially those deep balls. It's just insane. Touch and accuracy. Yeah, touch exactly. and accuracy with Penix, man. It's 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 like effortless with Penix. It really like you, you look at it in the air, you're like, yeah, this receiver's gonna catch it just because it's thrown like flawlessly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, but yeah, and I I will say before, you know, with Knicks, it's gonna be interesting because you know, a lot of things they ran at Oregon was behind the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. So you, you're right. I, I did see, you know, they did, you know, they didn't ask him to, to he, when he did deliver those deep throws, they, they, you know, they were there to, I think, was it Troy Franklin? Um, but, you know, it's going to be interesting to see now coming to the NFL because you have to throw with that anticipation when you come to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just going to be interesting to see with that timing and that rhythm, is he able to, again, we know he's a good processor, but is he able to keep that with that transition? Because it's mm-hmm. moving even much quicker when it comes the, to the NFL. those windows get tighter. And those too. windows get tighter. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it'll it'll be interesting um, to see. But, yeah, th- thank you, David, for coming in. And I know you have a a, a few super chats here, so we're going to get to those while we got you up. We got a nine ninety nine super chat from you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate Thanks, you David. coming in with that. And then also a four ninety nine super chat, David Yonkin. Man, thank thank you, thank you for coming in with all this. We appreciate you. He says, "I don't think Sean has as much time to do a total rebuild as people think. If no QB in the first round, does Sean build the defense? What do you think on this one, Dylan? I'm gonna toss this one over to you first. Yeah, I'm seeing a trend here that people think if there's uh, not a quarterback's luck in the first round or even the second round, let's say, that uh, they're just going to, you know what, let's just focus on defense. Let's build up one side of the ball. I I think they could go several spots on this team. You could, depending on what they want to do with bowls, especially, you know, all the trade docs here, maybe they don't trade them this year, but maybe they, at the deadline, who knows, especially if this team's not looking great, you can draft his successor, an offensive tackle, yeah. You could obviously this team needs a wide receiver. You brought in, you bring back Tim Patrick. I restructure him rather, but it's you can't really rely on him. Unfortunately, uh, having those two injuries in back to back first weeks of training camp. Um, Cortland, we don't same with him. Do we know by obviously this is a little ways in the future? But the the trade deadline next. Uh, next season, we we don't know who's going to be here and how good this team is going to be. So, what I think is a good idea, you know, get go BPA as much as possible that you can in the draft. You know, trade down, get some picks, and build the nest. Build, let's let's add some receivers. Let's add some O line. Let's build up that defensive line. So when a quarterback, uh, uh, the opportunity arises for you to select a quarterback one that you truly like, you can plug him in and you can have success immediately. Not saying the quarterback, you know, he's not going to have like throw 50 touchdowns or anything, but he's going to have a, a, a better system and a better uh, nucleus around him. Kind of like uh, the Chiefs when they got Patrick Mahomes. I know we, we hate hearing his name, but it's, it's the truth. We had They had a team built up and they had Alex Smith and he was fine but it clicked once they got him starting games. That's, that's when it really uh, really took off. So um, they, they definitely need to build up the defense, but I don't think they should limit themselves to just sticking to that side of the ball. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, it, it shouldn't be yeah, just defensive focused. You know, this, this offense needs some work. You know, we, we don't know. You just alluded to that. We don't know how much longer. Well, I know Tim Patrick, they brought back on the one-year deal. And we don't know how much longer Sutton's going to be a Denver Bronco. So you have to consider drafting a wide receiver um, or maybe two, possibly, right? At, you know, as successors to those two. Um, tight end, you know, is another one. Yep. That what Trotman got the two-year deal, and also with Dulcich, 
<laughs> you know, hopefully he can remain healthy, but that's that's a big if, David. <laughs> so, you know, the scenario I proposed, I think it was a few pods back of if Brock Bowers is there at 12, get him. You know, get him. Mm-hmm. You could always look at getting maybe, you know, a Spencer Rattler or something, you know, in, in, in round three. You know, so again, that the different ways to kind of do this, but I, I think they, they need to look at this, David, as not just offensive focus, not just defensive focus. This entire roster um needs, you know, playmakers. And you just need to you just need to build it. You know, Sean Payne's gonna build it in his own vision. So yeah, I'm just gonna say build the roster out. You know, go with I would say go with BP as much as you can. Mm-hmm. But I think there are times where, you know, the 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 need at certain positions is going to trump the BPA. But I would say definitely, like obviously, those first two rounds, you know, I would say the need kind of trumps the BPA. But but yeah, moving forward, at you know, in the round five and six, this just definitely fill out fill out this roster for sure. Mm-hmm. All righty. And again, David, thank thank you for coming in with the super chats. You know, you know we appreciate you, my man, as always. Thanks so much, David. All righty. Got a few Facebookers here. Eli, Eli Brown. Hello. Hello to you as well. Thank you for coming in. Hick Flair Entertainment. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And then we got Keith Roman coming in. Broncos Country. Thank you, Keith. We're coming in Stidham, Tannehill, or Zach Wilson. <laughs> Looks like a rookie QB to me, but where in the draft is the question? Yes, Keith, that's that's the question here. Like where 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 will the Broncos be picking their quarterback? Is it at 12? And again, for me, it's if McCarthy is there at 12, go get him. I'm fine with McCarthy at 12. <laughs> If all the four are off the board and all you're left with is Knicks, Penix, Rattler, and the rest of them, you you trade back so you can get more picks. And then, you know, maybe you look at day two on getting Knicks or, you know, getting Penix if he's high. And if they're all gone, maybe a Rattler. As I mentioned, right? So again, there's there's a few different um, options, different plans, different approaches um, um, that the Broncos can take when it comes to finding their next uh, signal caller. But yeah, again, I, I think on the free agent ones that that uh, or the, the Tannehill or Zach Wilson. Yeah, again, I'm miss me on Zach Wilson. You know, Tannehill. Uh, I'd be, I. I wouldn't hate the thought. I wouldn't. I mean, you you could do worse. Uh, you know, if 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 the Broncos think they need some sort of veteran presence to come in, um, you know, let's say in camp, you know, Stidham is not performing up to expectations, and the rookie is not going to maybe maybe bringing in them there, um, maybe signing one later. But I I really do think. Um, Stidham with drafting a QB um, is is the way to go. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, and one thing I do want to mention, especially with a rookie quarterback this year, uh, start them as early as possible. Oh, yeah. Because not only it's like, oh, yeah, maybe, you know, I really like this guy. I want to get him up to speed and he could be the future. But you want to have a really big sample size to see, oh, maybe I'm I'm not so happy with this guy and I can go into ne- next draft and find someone that I do want. Because mm-hmm. you don't want to be stuck with uh, with the quarterback like this, like when we had, uh, what's it, like Paxton, we kind of hung on to him a little too long, I think. He, even though he wasn't here that long, uh, it, it sure felt like it. And you don't you don't want to be trapped with a quarterback just because oh well maybe I could turn him into something no it 
get your sample size, get him out there, get him the reps, because that's the only way they're going to learn. I, I think the sitting on the bench uh, is a little overrated. Yeah. Because I remember at the beginning of the season, no one thought Jordan Love looked very good. Like, he looked fine. But you're like, oh, this guy's like, he's been in the league four years now, and he's not looking good. It's the second half of the season because yeah. he was getting those reps because of the mm-hmm. chemistry that he finally caught on. So, yeah, if we take a rookie, it's got to be that. And I, I, if the Broncos take a quarterback, which I think they do, it's, I think it's going to be in the first three rounds. Yeah. It's got to be somewhere in there. And, and as for the free agents, I totally agree. I think Tannehill, if you're trying to raise the floor of that quarterback room, he's, he's the guy to go with there. Yeah. And it, you bring up a good point in the sense of start the rookie right away. I mean, you, you know, you're drafting premium talent all around the roster and you're essentially going to start them day one, start your rookie quarterback. I mean, that that's, that's the only way that they can get out there and, and learn. And also it builds that chemistry with the rest of the players. You know, and again, I know the Jordan Love and Green Bay situation was just a, a little bit different because that was his first time kind of for, this was his first full year starting with mm-hmm. the young talent. So he was already on the roster. But again, he, he got out there, you know, once Aaron Rodgers left, he got out there and you just start. Again, it was a little shaky at first, but mm-hmm. you just started to see the chemistry develop. And he, he, we, we, hopefully that the Broncos can kind of learn from that and you know, they kind of have that same trajectory when, you know, they start, when they bring in their, bring in their rookie guy. Um, but yeah, we, we will see. But again, Keith, thank you for coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks right. like we have some stars here from our friend, William James Ooh. Baker. Small one. Thank you, William James Baker for coming in. Good morning from London. Thank, thank you for coming in with that, man. Think we can accept that trading up is not going to be easy. I know Sean wants to, but realistically, Bo Nix probably be the guy if still at 12. If not, trade back, get some picks back, and save for next year. This year, expectations are low, so let's get young, talent, and defense, and get QB next year if we have to. Tannehill is who should get now to at least have some experience there and safety net for the team. Yeah. Uh, William, I, I think you've pretty much summed up what what we've been saying here tonight thus far. Um, you know, in the sense of the, you know the, the trading the, again, the trading up is it's not going to be easy. It's probably it's probably not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's 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 too it's too big of a jump, and the Broncos don't have the ammunition as it pertains to capital to to get up in that top three. Um, so you. We, Forget about the trading up. And, yeah, with Bo Nix. Again, I, I think a lot of Broncos fans are, you know, coming around to the fact that Bo Nix will be the next starting quarterback uh, for the Broncos. And, you know, if he if he's there at 12, they, they may get him. But, you know, I'm on the mindset of, you know, trading back and getting him later. But, obviously, it's whatever Sean Payton wants to do there. Um, and then, yeah, I think with that, kind of build that roster, William. I, I, I think you bring up a good point. Let's just build the roster, get young, just about in every facet of the team. So, again, they can start building that chemistry, as we just alluded to. Um, yeah, again, we were thinking Tannehill might be, you know, maybe a, a, a last resort option, you know, if, if they want to bring in someone with some experience um, to kind of, help them out when it, when it comes to quarterbacking, that's fine. But, you know, I, I'm on the mindset of get young everywhere, let this team just go and, and build from there. But yeah, your, your point is well taken. This is a great summary. Thank you for coming in all the way from London. We appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, shoot. It's maybe for the best that uh, the Vikings got this first round pick and take the Broncos at it. Not 100%, but pretty close to it. Takes the Broncos out of the running for trading up. So they can just, okay, let's get this out of our mind. Let's focus on, okay, do we like a Knicks at 12? Do we want to trade down? Because there's 
it, it, this basically takes the Broncos out of the bidding war, I think, to get up into the top five or six. Because I, I say six because I don't see any world where the Chargers want to trade with us at five. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely a good idea to stockpile some draft picks for this year and next year. I think I think uh, it's fun in the moment during the draft and we're like, oh, we traded back and we got two to three picks for this year. I, I want to see a few picks go towards next year as well, yes. especially uh, if you can spread those out. Uh, get talent in multiple years instead of just one. You can't just bank on one draft class making or breaking your team. Um, yeah, just defensive talent, offensive talent. And I, I think if at this point, if the Sean Payton is going to bring in a free agent quarterback, it might be post draft, yeah. depending on who, who he can snag a course. Say if he does take a Knicks at 12. I don't think there's really a need to go out and get a Tannehill, but say if he gets a Spencer Rattler or Mike uh, Pratt, I, mm-hmm. I'd prefer to have a Tannehill. Maybe maybe that's just me wanting the Broncos to be a little more competitive than they're going to be. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard for me to see Sean Payne just trotting out Stidham, though. No. I, I just have that feeling that he wants to upgrade the room. I, maybe I'm wrong because he has waited until now and still nothing. So we'll, we'll just have to see. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, we'll see, you know, after the draft, you know, that, that'll that definitely kind of give some insight as to kind of how we feel about that pick. But again, William, thank you for coming in um, all the way from London, my man. We appreciate you. All righty. Let's see who else we have. I got Greg Smith. Good evening, Broncos country, Denver Broncos for life. Thank you. And he also mentions I'm really liking that hat. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, I got to do the old school D every now and again. Got to gotta sport it, man. Got to sport it. All right. Got Phil McLaughlin coming in. Thank you, Phil. You know, you come in time and time again. We appreciate you. He <laughs> says, good evening, Ron and Dylan. Glad Fields is gone. We can stop talking about him. <laughs> hashtag Buckham. Hashtag MHH for life. Hashtag the Broncos football. Yeah. Yeah, Fields is now um, no longer in consideration. Um, I, I think we could all, you know, secretly shout out or loudly shout out. Yes, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and again, Phil, I, 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 all jokes aside, I, I really think Fields was never in play for Denver because they, it's just it won't be. It's, it's not a. It's not a match made at all. It's you know Sean Payton's system again, which is so dependent upon throwing in the middle of the field, timing, crossing routes, in rhythm. And fields, it's just like your Russell Wilson, just running all over the place. And he does, I, Fields doesn't even see the field. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's just like he just takes off and run. And he may throw a ball every now and again, but, um, but yeah, I, I just didn't think it was, it wasn't going to work at all, anyways. But yeah, um, I'm glad he's off the board. Um, you know, he can help um, be the backup uh, QB there in, and uh, Pittsburgh sitting behind Russ and wishing them both of them well. Again, when not when they play us, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but wishing both of them well. And depending on uh, because we the Broncos do play the Steelers this year. Depending on yes, uh, how late in the season we'll see which of those quarterbacks is starting. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. You know, there's things to like about Fields. I think. Uh, uh, people, you know, he's been compared to like, you know, always a younger Russell Wilson. Well, a younger Russell Wilson could actually run around a lot more. And he was quicker. <laughs> uh, not that I want him here. I, I don't want Fields here. Trust me. Uh, I Like I could see why uh, you could make him work. He's mm-hmm. very, uh, Sean Payne's made a bunch of quarterbacks work. I just think Russell started to become limited in his running and uh, yeah. whatnot. But uh, yeah, uh, the two quarterbacks over the past two seasons who have taken the most sacks on uh, on one team, so that that should uh, that should be interesting for sure. <laughs> yes, 
Yes, most definitely. Again, Phil, thank you for coming and you know we appreciate you, my guy. All righty, let's see who else we have in the chat. Mr. Naj Al Top coming in. Thank you, sir. 1999 in Super Chat. I've seen a while, my brother. Thank you for coming in. He says, hey, brothers. In my opinion, this has been a terrible offseason, but it's the cost of the Wilson debacle. Looks to me Danucci will be our starter as he'll beat out Stidham. Knicks and Penix will be there in the third round. Build the roster. I'll let you take this one first, Dylan. I, I, I'm not sh- I guess what are your thoughts on the the Nucci will be the starter portion? <laughs> that I, I don't see that happening. But what, what are you what are you thinking there? Yeah, uh, he's sure gonna have to prove it. He's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, he definitely takes more chances than Stidham, and he's more fun to watch. But that I don't know if that'll make him the starter. And if I'm being honest, I don't think Danucci's in the running to be the starter. I think you you either bring in a veteran like we've been talking about, or you draft a guy, a Knicks or a Penix, which I think Penix will be there in the third. Depend, it depends on how high people are on, especially after the medicals came through clear and whatnot. Let's, I'd still be a little gun shy, but I, I don't think Knicks gets out of the second round. Um, but yeah, this what we're witnessing is uh, what happens when you not only trade for a quarterback and give up a lot of draft capital but then you pay the man and you have to eat that 85 million over two years mm-hmm. but thankfully we're taking the big hit this year in the the first year that rebuild because we know it's we know it's gonna suck but uh next year hopefully a little more optimistic and uh, I think like I mentioned before uh the past couple of pods, it's it's going to be rough, but when we see those flashes, we know it's going to be growing pains. You know, it's gonna we're going to be getting better. We're not going to be like, oh well, you know, hey, we we know we're a middling team and we make some plays here, but it doesn't matter because we know we're not going to compete. We're already at rock bottom, baby. <laughs> we can only go up from here. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, Nas. Again, I, I'm I'm with Dylan and the. Uh fact that yeah Danucci's yeah not not, not going to be the starter you, you're right he does he does definitely take more chances but again that doesn't equal him getting the nod to be the starter week one at all um so yeah Stidham you know I think if it comes to rookie Stidham Danucci expect Stidham to be your your day one starter um yeah, as far as Knicks and Penix are concerned, yeah. Again, we 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 brought those up as, you know, now I guess that second tier um, of of QBs um, that the Broncos will probably be looking at now um, to draft. So yeah, again, they, they'll be there day two for the Broncos to to look at. But you know, I I. I uh, it's 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 just interesting to me that you know that this team i i just don't know it, it's kind of hard to it's pinpoint because i think to your point dylan it's the team has to go through this they have to go through this is this is the i guess effects of or the impact of a rebuild and this is what they failed to do. Again, Broncos fans have had this false hope since Super Bowl 50 of, oh, yeah, our roster is good enough to get back to the playoffs. Like in 2016, oh, yeah, we just came out for Super Bowl 50. We can go back. And again, some, if not most of those key pieces, a lot on defense were still there that year after Super Bowl 50, but pieces on the offense, I mean, quarterback, <laughs> Bateman man and retired, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? And I guess a roster as a whole wasn't, you know, good enough to sustain that. And now you're seeing with Sean Payton coming in that in order for us to really be 
going anywhere to even try to get back to relevancy we're just going to have to tear this thing down and and build it back up so yeah Naj, it's time to rip off the band-aid let people go let players go sign in young talent and let that talent build chemistry um it's 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 been time it's it's overdue um but again you know again i i i see what you're saying that you know what we're going to do with the whole off season is the, the broncos made their bed and they they had they have to lie in it right it's that 85 million dollar dead money and i mean that this is what you're seeing but again i'm glad that they're taking the bigger portion of it now but they, they, this will set them up you know next year and following years to keep at building this roster um to to be competing i think it was wasn't mike cliss that said that he doesn't see this team going far a few years <laughs> i think it's maybe look at 2026 2027 mm-hmm. <laughs> being the year for for the broncos to start making some noise and i agree with him i i think it's going to be at least <laughs> i say probably give it about three years <laughs> yeah sure. but yeah and yeah and at least uh during that time you'll You'll see the progression. It's just getting better, not middling. Hopefully, right. we'll, we'll be mm-hmm. seeing us getting better. Exactly. Yeah. All righty. Thank, thank you, Dodge, for coming in. I do see a lot of people in the chat. I see I see a lot of Penix lovers here, man. I see a lot of Penix. I'm seeing a lot of uh, Bo Nix talk as well. Yeah, Bo Nix talk and Penix. Yeah, so... Either or, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, we are at 51 minutes. So just going to peruse the chat a little bit more. We've got time for a few more, and then we're going to hang it up for tonight. Let's see who we got. Oh, we've got a super chat coming in here from GGG199. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. it. Says, Good evening, MHH. Who is most poised for a comeback? Mm. You, you, I have someone. Do you uh, want me to go first, Dylan, or you? Yeah, you go ahead. I'm trying to because there's a few I'm thinking of, but if you have yours, yeah, go go ahead. Mine's going to be Javante Williams. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think this year, um, J- Javante Williams is going to have a a major bounce back. You know, we saw last year that for him, every yard was so hard to get you know um i I know he was coming off that injury and we we thought he looked fine in camp coming you know off of it but i think that still has some lingering effect but now a fully healthy javante williams you know with you know a, a good did you say average above average offensive line and a new quarterback, I think it's it's poised to definitely make a, a, a comeback for sure. Um, so that that's gonna that's gonna be my guy, Dylan. Yeah, that's a that's a fantastic pick, especially second year off that injury. Um, God, I I just need to see that hard nose running again because that was supposed yeah. to be such a big component to this year, and it just didn't happen until you saw Jaleel McLaughlin out there a little bit, which. Finally started using him at the end of the year, a little too little, too late. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, maybe this is an easy one. Maybe uh, I could just take easy credit for this. I- I'm going to go with Tim Patrick because if he makes it past training camp, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. that's a comeback in itself, uh, especially after those back to back injuries to it, and especially those lower leg injuries for a wide receiver. It- it'll be interesting to see how much explosiveness he has, but. Uh, he was supposed to be a big part of this offense last year and it, him going down, I think really changed the plans of what this team was going to do offensively. Um, yeah, I, I, I would take Tim Patrick and I, I, I think that's more of me just being hopeful and optimistic because he's, he's not only a really good player like we've seen before his injuries, but just a really good dude in general and great for the locker room. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, you, you got to love the guy, you know, on and off the field. It's, you know, he's definitely a great leader, you know, being there to just 
you know, mentor and show those young receivers kind of how it's done. And Mr. Reliable on the field. You know, I, I, again, I know um, there were a lot of, not a lot, but there were several, you know, offensive issues last year for sure. But I feel as though Dylan having Tim Patrick on that team last year would have gone a long way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, having him come back, I, I think he's definitely going to um, make a comeback. There, there are a few in the running. I would say even, again, I mentioned him earlier, if he can stay healthy, a uh, Greg Dulcich. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I know off that injury, we, we'll see. We'll, I know he's had hamstring issues for the longest, but you know, hopefully he can come back and have that comeback, that 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 bounce back year. But yeah, Tim Patrick for for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, that's a good question. Thank you, GGG, for coming in with that. We appreciate that. All righty, looking through the chat here one last time. If you got any lingering questions, guys, get them in. Let's see. Oh, and then we got Gary Palmer <laughs> coming in with a 999 super chat. Thank you, Gary, for coming in, my man. We appreciate you. He says, Go Broncos. Yes. Mm-hmm. Go Broncos. Uh, again, liking some of the moves they're making. Um, I really like, I, I guess, let me ask you this question, Dylan. Out of all the moves that the Broncos have made doing free agency, which which one is your favorite? Uh, I really like the Brandon Jones signing, and it, mm-hmm. so this one, <laughs> this one might be a little goofy, I guess. But I, I really like the re-signing of a uh, little Jordan Humphrey. Mm-hmm. I think he's a really uh, solid receiver, and he had that uh, really great play against the Chargers, where he just yeah. breaking tackles and juking everyone and. That's just a that's just the guy you want on your team fighting, even when the season's dead and gone, uh, fighting for your football team. And I think he'll be solid for a, a solid uh, third or fourth option on the team for whoever's in here at quarterback. <laughs> yeah, my favorite. I'm forgetting his name. Um, the D lineman we picked up from the Saints, Ma- Malcolm Roach. Malcolm Roach. Yes. Just because, I mean, we we need bodies, Dylan. Mm. And I think he was, I think there was a ranking out there, and, and don't quote me, I believe it was like the number one graded run defender, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So, I mean, that given how the interior defensive line played and this the atrocious run defense that the Broncos had last year, I thought that was a big pickup. Um. And that should definitely help um, stuff this run. So I, I'm I, I like that signing a lot. Mm-hmm. That's signing a lot. All right, guys. Um, so look through the chat. I don't see anything else. Oh, let's see. Actually, let me. Did I did I, did I miss? Uh, no, it's some stars. I'm just going to have to scroll up a little oh, yeah, I'm scrolling up. Sorry, it's going too fast, guys. And again, we don't have Scott in here, so we're <laughs> so we're still manning the chat. It's uh, we... from Sorry, Phil. Let's see if we can find it here. Okay. We got Phil. Jeez, it might have passed by here. So I can read it off. Uh, from okay. this end. Sure. So it's from our, our good friend Phil McLaughlin. He says, I really do not want Sanders at edge. He is much better uh, floating. So draft an edge and pray VJ gets his head out of his you know what and uses him correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Phil, so, yeah, I, I when I first heard that Sanders was going to edge, I'm like, Really, Joseph? Really? We're going to do this again? Like, he's an inside linebacker. You had him play that position last year. Let's let's have him. Oh, you found it. Yep. Let's have him remain as an inside linebacker. Again, you know, that was, I mean, that was his rookie year. So, of course, it's going to, 
you know, he didn't shine. I think he still has a lot to learn, but you know, I feel as though him, you know, under the tutelage with Alex Singleton, I, I think would have would have been good. I just I just hate when you know these coaches wanna you know change positions for players like because I, I didn't like it when Baron Brownie moved to edge. Now we're seeing it. We're kind of seeing him shine a little bit more now at the edge position, but I thought he was a great inside line. Um, and so I'm, I just want players to stay at one position so that they can learn learn that position and develop and grow in that position. Um, now, again, I can probably get the, the rationale here just because – you know, the inside linebacker position, you have to be very cerebral. It's kind of like the, you know, kind of like a safety where you have to be the quarterback for the defense in a way, inside linebacker and safety. So I, I know there were a lot of different plays last year where Drew Sanders did look lost. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I think that attributed to to the move, whereas though with Edge, you just, you know, put on some more, some more LBs and, They just have one assignment to go get your quarterback. So it makes it a little bit easier there. And again, I I see the reasoning for that, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not a fan of, of moving it, moving positions, Phil. So I'm I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, Yeah. And draft an edge. I mean, again, Baron Browning and John Cooper. I mean, you can, they're not the worst, but again, that edge room can be improved. Um, so draft an edge. I would say, yeah, draft an edge. I would prefer to keep Sanders at inside linebacker. Um, and then again, let these young pieces um, go. What are your thoughts there, Dylan? Yeah, moving Sanders to edge is just – it's it's stupid. I, I want to use more colorful language, but I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I just hate the move. He, he was a better – inside linebacker in college obviously he, he had played at edge but coming to the nfl he's he's a little smaller uh to be an edge defender so unless he packs on some some beef i don't really see him being much of anything off the edge especially behind a cooper a benito and a uh, browning um and and just you're stunting his growth his rookie season, you have inside linebacker. Like, all right, you stink. Go, go to the edge where you're undersized for. And if you get washed out there, uh, maybe we'll flip flop you back and forth. That's kind of the Ben Vance Joseph's mo. And mm. it 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 worked with Baron because at least in college, Baron, uh, if I remember, he graded out as a better pass rusher. Better, uh, edge for better, yeah. So and Vance Joseph wasn't in charge of moving him to edge. Um, <laughs> So he he was a better uh, pass rusher in college, so that made sense. He had the size for, it. and we we've seen a lot of flashes of him being truly great at the edge. It's just injuries have kind of held him back, and uh, yeah, it's just I I don't know. They we spent such a high draft pick on Sanders as well, so it's just infuriating to see him misused instead of committing to really teaching him that position uh, on the inside, and. Uh, I know Peyton said he wanted to move him to the edge. He didn't seem super, like, you know, enthusiastic about it or super committed to it. So maybe we could see him on the inside, hoping. But if not, definitely draft draft an edge because you could never have enough pass rushers. And like you mentioned, the, the three that we have there now, I think they're all really good number two guys. But we don't have that true number one edge rusher yet. Yeah. Yeah, I always say yeah, and I always say that the past the the edge group for Denver they're the, they're the some of their parts. Like you can't you can't identify one player in that edge group to say, you know, he can go get your quarterback or he's the player that opposing offenses have to game plan for. So that that's a better way to say it. Mm-hmm. There there isn't that person in, in the edge group. So. Yeah, just 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 go draft your edge, and again, you know, depending on what you do as far as draft map, trying to get that second round pick, 
you know, if you if you can acquire that second round pick, you, you you can have it or trade back, right? You can get that with the trade back again. Just but just go get him. Go get him. But again, Phil, thank you for coming in with this. We appreciate you as always, my man. And then we got Michael Ronquillo coming in. Thank you, sir. He says, Great show tonight, Ron and Dylan on Orange and Blue View. Thank you, Michael, for coming in time and time again. We, we appreciate you in, in the comment section, my man. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thanks as always, Michael. Yeah. And he mentions here, I just want to pull up a few more from him. Thank God Justin Fields is not coming <laughs> to the Broncos. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we dodged a bullet on that one. And you also have the trade up for J.J. McCarthy. Okay. Um, so you're thinking that J.J. McCarthy is going to be the guy. Well, yeah, we, we'll see. You know, I'm you know, again, if they like him enough and if he's within striking distance, possibly, you know. Um, but I, I think I I I really think it's gonna be Bo Nix. For some reason, I have this gut feeling that you know the the that Bo Nix just I, I think Bo Nix and Sean Payne will work well together. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm thinking that that's going to be the guy because again, Nix allows you, and I'm pretty sure they're also trying to get that second round pick with him. You should be able to also get that second round pick with that trade back. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm not always, don't always talk so glowingly about Nix, whether I'm in the chat or I'm on here. Uh, I do think <laughs> he's a really, uh, he's a really good prospect. It's just, I, you know, I really like him. Like I've said before, I really like him. I don't love him until I really see it in the NFL, not just college where he's got guys running open. He, the windows get tighter. You can process all you want. You still got to get it there. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to need to see it. When, if we even pick him at 12, you know what? It's really not going to kill me because I'll be like, if that's the guy – that Sean Payton wants, how how could I be mad with that? Right. So, yeah. Uh, and JJ, I I just don't think he gets to us. I think if he slips past six, I'd be kind of shocked because I know the Giants just brought in Drew Locke, whom <laughs> yeah. some in Broncos country still really love. I, I you know, and they got Daniel Jones there. That's I don't think that stops them from taking. Yeah, McCarthy. If they they really truly like him, so um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we get the guy uh, this season. If not, it definitely has to happen next season. Yes, for sure, for sure. Again, Mike, thank you for coming in, my man. We appreciate you as always. All right, guys. Um, well, that's going to do it. For another installment of the Orange and Blue View, it was great. Um, it was a great conversation. Thank you, everyone, for coming in and showing support, as always. If you don't do anything else, make sure you hit that um, like button, subscribe, and share to you know all your platforms um, with all the shows. Um, and then, if not, also follow us on X. Um, for me at Ron White NFL, trying to get the, yep, at Ron White NFL, and then also follow Dylan at, at Dylan Von Arts MHH. And again, just, you know, give us some comments and ask questions. We're there to answer them, give opinions, give takes. Um, and we'll go from there. All righty. Dylan, any parting words for the community, uh, for this evening? Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. Another great conversation, as always. Um, just judging by the chat, I think we'll be talking about quarterbacks uh, oh, yeah. even even after the draft, probably. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm I'm used to that by now. But it's good it's good to see the conversation, everyone's opinions on uh, who they think yeah. fits best. Yes, it's a great conversation starter, guys. And again, thank thank you for coming in with. Um, you know, all your comments um, and takes on, on the quarterback class. It, 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 it's very, it's very good uh, talk for football. All righty, guys. Well, until next week, we will talk to you later and have a great night and go Broncos. Go Broncos. <laughs>